Hello, I'm Lynn Twist. I'm a signatory of the Fuji Declaration. I'm honored to be that. I'm also the uh, president of the Soul of Money Institute and an author of the book by the same name. And I'm also the co-founder of the Pachamama Alliance. And it's a great honor to talk about the source of wonder uh, and connecting to source and the times we're living in. Um, it's my assessment, and I'm uh, speaking to you from the United States, from San Francisco, California, where I live, <clears throat> that we are in the beginning uh, of the third millennium, the beginning of the third millennium. The 21st century is not just a hundred year cycle, it's the first hundred, hundred year cycle in the third millennium. And I love thinking about these huge swaths of time, particularly when things are rough and tumble, as they are all over the world, but particularly in my country. Um, and it makes me see the continuum, the fact that we will get through this. And I'm speaking to you in 2020, the time uh, when we're beginning the decade that clearly is, in many people's view, including my own, the most important decade in the history of humankind. It is the decade from 2020 to 2030 that will determine, establish, and shape the future of life on Earth for the next 1,000 years perhaps life at all. With the crises we face, we are um, in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, every single living human being on this planet is impacted at the same time by something so large, so uh, internally earth-shaking, uh, that we are having a common experience at different levels, yes, but everyone is affected. And in my lifetime, I've never seen that before. And we're halfway through this 2020 year. And uh, I think we all thought, at least I did when I was a younger woman in the, uh, at the end of the 20th century, that by 2020, we'd have, we'd have clear vision. We would have 2020 vision. We would know where we were going, why we were going there as a human species. But rather than that, what's happened at the outset of this year, a pandemic, hit the whole world right in the beginning of 2020 and told us all, you need to stop. It disrupted everything and continues to do that. It interrupted, it disrupted, it stopped, it halted. It pulled all of us back in a way that we had to really go within. We were told to go home, to stay at home, to shelter at home, to shelter inside of our homes, and I say inside of our bodies, inside of our souls, inside of our hearts. This sheltering activity wasn't just for a week or even a month. It's still going on as I speak right now. And I know that what is happening as a result of it is um, a lot of beautiful things in families that had never really spent time together. Couples that are getting to know each other at a new level people who are starting gardens in their backyard that didn't even think about farming or gardening before. Uh, and in that isolation, the connectivity we crave has now become available through technology, like my speaking to you right now. At the same time, the pandemic has destroyed lives. It has killed people. And many, many people have been very, very, very ill and lost loved ones. So there's pain, there's suffering, and there's new ways of seeing and being. We also have uh, a situation where our economy is totally devastated. So we have a huge economic crisis. We have a huge health crisis. We also have a huge climate crisis, huge climate crisis, almost unspeakably serious. And now we have a huge injustice crisis, particularly in the United States with Black Lives Matter, with the killing of black people by police uh, and a revealing of the white supremacy culture that has fostered colonialism, forms of oppression in every color and shape for people who are not white, uh, and uh, a patriarchy that's out of control, particularly in our country. So education is in crisis, politics is in crisis, government is in crisis, Health is in crisis, planetary health is in crisis, um, justice is in crisis, the rule of law is in crisis, the media is in crisis, 
we're all in a multiple series of crises and all of this is a breakdown that could be, and I say it is, a breakthrough. The seeds of every breakthrough is in every breakdown, if we're willing to see it. I'm considering this time where we're sheltered at home, uh, where we're, uh, we've gone into not the tomb, as Valerie Carr says, but the womb, uh, at, that, uh, at that time where all these distractions, the travel, the multitasking, the zillions and zillions of priorities we all have, have been taken away so that we are only doing what's essential and using what's essential in our own homes. This has relaxed the intensity of life. This has been difficult, yes, painful, yes, but also calming, reflective, contemplative, uh, and has given us the space and time to see maybe we need, in fact, I know we need, a reset, a reimagining of civilization, a rethinking of who we are, a recreating, a resourcing. And all of what we're facing, we will not get through if we don't work from the divine spark that lives in every human being. If we do not draw on source and stay connected to source, because that's what's missing. And if we do, we can get through this. We will get through it and not just get through it. We will foster, we will hold, we will allow, we will um, nourish a new birth. Uh, we're in a birth canal, you could say. We're in a, a pregnancy. We don't know how long this pregnancy will last, but eventually if we uh, all put our intention and our love and work from our heart, our soul, our source, our spirit, we will give birth to the civilization, the society, the culture we've dreamed of since we were all born. An environmentally sustainable, spiritually fulfilling, socially just human presence on this planet. A civilization that has the feminine as strong and powerful as the masculine. There's a great prophecy about the 21st century from the Cherokee people in North America. They say that the bird of humanity has two wings, a male wing and a female wing. The male wing has been fully extended for centuries and fully expressed, while the female wing has been truncated, folded, not yet fully expressed, held back. And the male wing, in order to keep the bird of humanity afloat, has become overdeveloped, overmuscular, in fact, has now become violent, and the bird of humanity has been flying in circles for hundreds of years. The Cherokee people say in the 21st century, this century, the Sophia century, the century when women will take our rightful role in co-equal partnership with men, a century when feminine leadership, female archetype, will have its full expression in balance with masculine. They say in the 21st century, the male wing will begin to relax because the female wing in all of us will fully extend, fully express, uh, and then instead of flying in circles, the bird of humanity will soar. May it be so. May it come from the divine spark in every, every single human being. May we stay connected to source and may we soar. Thank you.